cosine of i x. Well, I believe you know that cosine of a x, where a is any constant, any constant value, is equal to e to the a x plus e to the negative a x over 2. So we can make use of this to evaluate this. Let's see what you are going to get. Promise you what you are going to get is really nice, alright? It's very, very nice. That if you want to draw some fake conclusion, it's going to shake some people, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to go ahead and try this, alright? Assuming we're having a complex constant times x right there, what do we really get? Promise you it's very, very nice and it seems identical. Well, let's use that relationship to get this. That just becomes e to the i x plus e to the negative i x over 2. Okay? Great. Now, I want you to know that e to the i x is an Euler form of a polar form of a complex number. Where we have x to be the argument and um, since it's just i x, it simply shows us that the um, modulo right here is just 1, so it's just e. So we have 1 times e to the i x is just cosine of x plus i sine x. That's the first component. We have plus this other guy right here, we're having to be cosine of, here we're having negative i x. The negative is from the angle x or the argument, so we have cosine of negative x plus i sine of negative x. And remember, we were saying all of this was multiplied with one half. So we have it to be one half of the whole of that. Let me just put it like this. I don't want to give fraction anymore. Okay. Where we have cosine of x plus i sine x and this, 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 this. You know that the cosine function is an even function, while the sine function is an odd function. So we can get this to be cosine of x plus, you know, plus sine of a negative angle, something I saying the negative sine of that angle. So we're going to get minus in this case, not 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 plus. Okay. And that's it like that. Plus this other man right here. Cosine of x and sine of x is just straight. We don't do anything on them. I sine x. And this right here. So we go ahead and had cosine of x plus cosine of x. That's just 2 cosine x. Add um, i sine x minus i sine x that gets to 0. And we have 1 over 2 of that. That is just cosine of x. Wow. Cosine of x is something I'm saying. Cosine, that is a hyperbolic cos of ix. Hmm. Well, how about we try for the sine? We have the sine, hyperbolic sine of ix to become um, e to the ix for sine, the only difference is that it changes to negative e to the negative ix over 2 and we can still use this relationship the relationship of the Euler form and the polar form to deal with that you have it to become e to the ix is the same thing as saying cosine of x plus i sine x that's for the first part Okay, minus cosine of negative x plus i sine of negative x. That's for the second part, over 2. And um, knowing that cosine is a, is a limit function and sine is an odd function, we're going to have cosine of x plus i sine of x. Okay, minus cosine of an even function. We still have it to be x. Okay, and um, this right here, sine of negative angle is just negative of that angle. Cosine of x minus i sine x. 
and we have cosine of x minus cosine of x that gets to zero, then i sine x minus negative i sine x, that's just i sine x plus i sine x, remember our denominator which was 2 divided by 2, this is just i sine x, where the sum of this is just 2 of that, we cancel the 2 at the bottom, and we get this, Ooh. that means that the shine or the hyperbolic sign of i x is i sin x. In fact, is this even possible? But well, that's what you get.